Running a multi-million dollar business at the age where I started at 17 and now I'm 25, so eight years later, has been the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. Like, I graduated high school, I started my business my senior year of high school, I graduated, I moved back to America and my business has been my only income, has been my only passion, drive, and just my mindset. I never envisioned me ever in my life like being able to do something else outside of my business but i feel like eight years later i feel like i'm losing my spark i feel like i'm losing like my drive and my ambition and just my oomph when it comes to like my business and it's really scary and i really hope that i'm not alone when i say this but i just feel like I don't know and that's what's bothering me but like running a business is so hard especially when you don't have any job experience or you haven't met people or have people around you that is business like-minded when you're up here meaning like you have the business but everybody around you doesn't understand or hasn't been to the level yet to really help you or assist you it's so hard like this shit is hard y'all like for real don't let the pictures and you know the nice things and the warehouses and all that fool you don't get me wrong it's blood sweat and tears and i mean majority tears in this situation but this is a lot like yeah i don't know here's a story of how my business destroyed my entire family and i am now four years no contact with anyone in my remote family so <laughs> Okay, and also, by the way, when I say immediate family, that means my mother, my stepmom, my stepsister, my cousins, my aunties, uncles, my, you know, anybody, everybody besides my dad. <laughs> now, let me give a quick backstory on my business and pretty much like how I was even able to do that. So I started my business eight years ago when I was 17 years old, my senior year of high school and i struggled with acne i started getting all of my first pimples during my senior year of high school you know as prom senior pictures graduation field trips all this so i started getting my first pimple and i got it right in the middle of my forehead and then eventually it started spreading everywhere so i grew up overseas in seoul south korea and i was trying cetaphil you know any type of brain you could think of clean and clear a lot of korean skincare and it just was not helping my skin so I ended up moving back to America after I graduated in July of 2017. And I was always very into like my own body wash, body care type of situation. So I ended up making a body oil named Rose Galore. And I put it on my website. And at the time I was only selling shimmer body oils and a few lip glosses at the time. So I ended up putting my body oil named Rose Galore on there and Rose Galore eventually became a facial product. One of my customers brought it, used it on her face, it cleared their face. I posted it before and after and my customers was like buying it back to back to back, but I had coconut oil in it. So I reformulated it and I added more healthier, not, so yeah. Um, I also reformulated and I added vitamin E to it, rose hip, organic rosehip oil, argan oil, like a lot of more fattier oils to it to really help me reformulate it so it wasn't very clogging because the main ingredient in my body oils was coconut oil at the time. So moving forward, I ended up doing that and my business blew up and I had a major success with my Rose Galore facial oil, which was good for, you know, clearing everybody's blemishes, acne, hyperpigmentation, whatever you could think of. So fast forward, we hit COVID and my family now has fully transitioned from work, like working underneath me, whether it was coming out the work, working for me full time or whatever the situation was, everybody was under the impression we work for moon, we work underneath you, we are doing this, we're all together, we're all one unit. All right, cool. So moving forward after that, May, April 30th, was my million dollar restock. This is a restock that we have been prepping for. We were filling, stuffing, labeling, doing whatever we can. And my website opened exactly at 1159 EST. So I was in Atlanta, Georgia at the time. So the website opened, we had so many people on the website. 
and we actually hit a million dollars in eight minutes on there and ever since then my business has been a mainstream multi-million dollar business so yeah i just wanted to throw my little one two out there but anyway moving forward on four years no contact and how all of this blew up so anyway moving forward after the big up restock everybody was working full time over time and of course i just made a million dollars so of course everybody's like <laughs> So the first person that I end up icing out was my mom. And I quote that very very loosely because we've never been close growing up. I was raised by my great grandma and my grandma. And my mom was never a motherly figure to me. It was always my two grandmas that was a mother figure. So the mom loosely is me, meaning I was in her belly. She pushed me out and that's like mom. Damn. So anyway, my mom ended up taking me to a car lot. She was crying and begging for this car. This her dream car. It was an Audi. I can't remember if it was a Q6 or a Q8. I really can't remember. So if it wasn't a Q8, it's a Q6. So this is a car that she wanted. We end up going to the lot. Like a few days after the restock on my lunch break and on her lunch break, we took lunch together and we ended up driving to a lot in Atlanta and they had the car there. It was a beautiful car. We test drove it. Speakers was nice. Everything was nice. So I ended up putting out a deposit on the car, which by the way, I never got the deposit back. But I always think no matter what, business is business and I need to make sure my business is handled because now I have over 20 plus employees work underneath me that I need to make sure is going to be paid before I make a major $100,000 purchase on something that's not bringing me any money in. So we end up doing that. A few days later past, my mom comes into work. You know, she's been coming in. We've been talking. We've been chatting or whatever. She let me know that the guy at the car lot called her and asked her what was going to be the update on the car because... <clears throat> because they had another interested buyer. Now, I've brought plenty of cars in my lifetime. I brought a lot of other people cars in my lifetime. And I know realistically, that was more a tactic on, hey, we want the sale, what y'all gonna do? Or whatever. Now, my mom, who doesn't know about a lot of cars, didn't know that. So she's just now like in panic mode. I don't wanna lose my car. You probably sure gonna buy this for me. I promised the car by the end of the year. Her birthday's January 1st. So it's like, I could have brought the car for you for Thanksgiving, that, you know, Christmas, Halloween, it doesn't matter. But I said I was going to get it. I stick to my word, and that's completely fine. So moving forward, we end up getting into it over the car. My mom decides that she decides if she wants to, you know, go off on me about the car and ignore me. So now this obviously drove a wedge in our business relationship because you're now working underneath me, and you do a lot of our, you know, in internal work. So, Yeah. So after that, things really, really go south with me and my mom. So after that, we end up getting into a really big argument. She then proceeds to call my grandmother. My grandmother then calls me and is like, what is going on? Your mom's called me. Like, y'all are into it again. What's going on? I'm like, what are you talking about? Me not even thinking that it's going to even go further than what it did because it's a car. Like, it's not that serious. And it's a car that you never had that you're expecting me to spend my money on, which I don't mind doing that. But it's like, let me handle my business first. And by then, if you know, my man house wasn't even in my account yet. My man house was on, on hold for review because that was the most money my brand has ever brought in at the same time. Not in general, but literally all at once. So, of course, they held it to make sure this was a legit and they released it later. But it was like, you're begging me to spend money that I don't even know if I'm going to even have yet. You know, well, we're back at the part of my grandma. My mom ended up calling my grandma. My grandma calls me and was like, what is going on? Your mom is calling me. She's upset. She's yelling. She says she's going to go to your warehouse. She says, so you need to get up because I don't know if this is really going to happen. I said, what do you mean? I said, you know, mess with all the other stuff we're talking about. I said, what do you mean? She's going to go to my warehouse. She was like, your mom told me that she's on the way to your warehouse right now to go get the locks changed and that she's going to start putting stuff in your oil. She's going to really make you pay. And I'm asking her, pay for what, pay for what? And she's not telling me. So I told her, I said, I know this is all over that Audi. My grandma's like, what are you talking about? I said, she got mad at me because I wasn't able to pay for the Audi in cash at the moment like I said I would. So now the whole direction of this conversation has now fully changed because my grandma didn't know what exactly she was upset for. She was calling me to let me know, hey, get your ass up, go to work and make sure you and your brand is okay because this is how you make, you know, you, you make your money or whatever. And you have all these, you have over 30,000 people's money because I heard 30,000 orders, 30,000 people's money that's expecting our stuff. 
So I rush to the warehouse. I get my locks changed. I change my alarm code. I change the email passwords to everything. I'm like, this is crazy. I make sure she hasn't been in there. I check the camera. She didn't even make it there yet. I end up beating her. The locksmith's there. I'm like, bro, put a rush on. I'm going to tip you. I'm going to tip you. Like, come on. I need you in and out. I need you in and out. Because I didn't want her to walk in on us in there attention the locks and it be like a whole scene. So everything was good. Nothing was tampered with. Thank God. And at the time when she called, I mean, at the time she also was like, I'm going to call the fire marshal on you because I did get my shipment of 500,000 bottles to my warehouse. And we were out of code, meaning everything was above, like, all the way to the ceiling, which is you're not supposed to be. But it was fixed immediately after we were notified that that was out of code. But while we were in the process of doing it, she was threatening to call the people on me. So I was like, all right, you really playing dirty. Like, this is crazy. And she was like, oh, when I'm going to expose you to the shade room, I'm going to let them know what you're doing. I'm not doing anything. Anything I did was on my YouTube blogs. You guys know, if you don't know, I used to do YouTube very heavily. And we would vlog all of us in the warehouse. You will see the whole family dynamic of us working together inside of my vlogs. And that was the reason why he was talking about vlogs for us to look back at later. Damn. Look back at later and really just be like, you know, oh, this is crazy. You know, good times, yada, yada, yada. Or oh, whatever. So moving on after that, I officially cut all my contact off with her. I ended up blocking her. I already had her blocked after we got into it about the car. But we block each other and I block each other all the time. So I was like, it's not that serious. And I know that we work together. So it was like, we're going to have to talk about it eventually or just move past it like we always do. Y'all know how it gets with black families where you have to brush everything underneath the rug. So that's how it was with them. So, so next thing you know, my birthday was around in August. And my mom ends up deciding to write a letter on my birthday. So as I'm leaving out of my apartment, you know, I, I went downstairs, went in the parking lot, was getting out of my car, getting in my car. I always check my email before I pull up. Usually I do it before I wake up, but I was in a rush. So it's my birthday, August 30th, and you know, Virgo. And I end up checking my email, and it's an email, and it has my mom's first and last name on the email, and it's like a demand letter. So I end up getting a demand letter on my actual birthday from my own mom saying that she's demanding X amount of money from this, this, and this, that if this doesn't get paid by this amount of time, she's going to end up suing, she's going to go take it to court, and that she will be exposing me, letting people know about my business, letting people know that I don't keep my word, and she's going to the shade room, like yada, yada, yada. And she knows one of my biggest fears was to ever get really publicly a bad prep or a bad name because at the time I couldn't handle that type of stuff. I was 20, 21 years old. Like I had just turned 21 on this day. So I was 20 years old and I was just dealing with all this. So moving forward, I ended up getting a letter and I immediately called my two people that like my C COO and my director of operations. And we we're on a call and I said, did y'all get this letter? They got the letter. So we're all on the phone like, what is going on? So my director of operations ends up calling my lawyer. No, one of them called, ended up calling my lawyer. And we were on the phone, my lawyer. My lawyer was like, what's going on? We read the letter. She's like, who is this from? And I was like, my mom. The whole phone got so silent. And if you understand how embarrassed and just how humiliating and just disgusting I felt having to explain to my lawyer that my mom could possibly sue me over nothing it blew my mind on how this was even like a real thing like I was just flabbergasted and on top of this you waited until the day that you knew I came out of you and you knew it was my birthday you wanted to ruin my birthday so you were already being like vindictive when it came to the way that you even went about the situation so anyway, after that, we all decided, you know, we're going to handle this another day. So my lawyer decides to end up, you know, writing her stuff. And I can't go into too much detail on the conversation with her and my mom or even my, me and my mom about that because that was like a legal matter. So I can't go too far into detail when it comes to that. But just know this lady really tries to take me down over a $100,000 car. And this is why I want to say family is family, friends are friends, but blood doesn't make you thicker. Blood is not thicker than water and blood does not make you family. I have friends that have never, ever crossed me in a dynamic that my family has in my life. So I consider all of my friends to be my family. And any of my family is 
exed out. Now we're at our, my surprise party. So my stepmom, my sister, all of my old friends from Korea, they all drove down from Tennessee. A lot of my Atlanta friends, my my friend, boyfriend at the time, like everybody pretty much and all of my majority of my employees were there and they did me a great surprise party for my birthday. Even though my birthday started out shitty because of, you know, the thing with my mom, but it really turned out great and I was very excited. I was happy. I had a great ass time. Like I was just, you know, cooling and booling or whatever. So moving forward, I allowed my stepmom and my stepsister to come back to work. I really was on the fence about it because my stepmom and my mom are married and I felt like you be with her, you got to go too. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody pretty much has to go. But I decided to let my stepmom continue to work because she was one of the faster faster fillers because I had hand like, you know, bottles that I had to pump. I taught her how to pump. So she was faster at this point than me because I was just mixing. So I really did need the help. And she let me know we won't be discussing her. You know, I said, I said, I don't want you on the phone with her. I don't want none of that here. I don't want her picking you up, dropping you off. I don't want none of that. If so, you can't work up in here. She said, okay, it was cool. We were always good after that. But now moving forward, I'm now going to speak on my next part to where it kind of gets a little. Okay, I'm back. And I also do want to throw this in there. So I do want to make it clear that when it comes down to me and my family um, dynamic, when it comes down to pay, I know that was a very big thing. And that's another reason why I like. I know that was like a big conversation between a lot of the family members. Everybody in my family was on payroll. My grandma was getting paid. My uncle was getting paid. When he had no job at my business, I still paid him. He's off the strength of you being in my family. My mom was getting paid. My stepmom was getting paid. And all of my under employees and my sister's boyfriend was getting paid. Anybody who I had work underneath me never, never not got paid from me. Whether you were working physically there or you just were getting a check because you're my family member. But I made sure that nobody in my family needed for nothing when I was able to provide for them. And I want to just make that very clear because that was a thing like that was trying to try to do the narrative with my mom. And no, everybody in my family got a paycheck, whether it was a, like a hundred million dollars, which is not what it was, or 50 cents. You were still going to pay something from me, whether it was what you wanted or what you feel like you deserve. You still got paid. And I feel like for you not to be working you were getting paid for free that's something so just wanted to throw that out there after that like i said everybody wanted to know contact i eventually ended up blocking my entire family after that because once i found out that my grandma who raised me from me being an infant to me being an adult like really was like my best friend me and my grandma did everything together i moved to korea with her like we did everything together that was my ace boom coon like that was really my mom for real so when i found out that she wrote the letter it really destroyed me like mentally physically emotionally like, i was sick to my stomach when i found out that she did that she helped write the letter and to this day, my grandma acts like she doesn't know why I stopped talking to her. She doesn't know why I stopped communicating to her. But you know that you wrote the letter. Like, you know you helped your daughter write the letter. And I feel like no matter what, it should be no reason to ever allow anything like that to get to that point to where you would turn on me. You know what I'm saying? It was like, just before it is, I, pay, I gave my grandma money to pay off her house and my mom to pay off her credit card bill. And that video of us went viral. And that was genuinely from my heart. Like, this before I had even touched a million dollars. I was doing that because that was my gift to y'all. Like, y'all, if you know, you know. Whether me and my mom was close or not, I still always tried to make sure it was some type of salvage relationship there between us. Whether I knew it was not meant to be or not, that's still, you know, my mom. And that's what we're taught. You have to still for something that's not there even though because they're family you know but i don't believe in that i never will believe in that and now i'm older i'm happy that i don't have to believe in anything like that and i will teach any of those that around me whether it's my nieces or nephews on my dad's side or you know whoever that that's not the case if you don't want to talk to somebody and protect your peace and protect your mental or they disrespect you or they even go do it to the extent because they know your family you cut them off like you would cut off a stranger you cut them off like you would cut off a bad boyfriend don't ever stick around for nothing that is not meant for you and not meant to make you happy so i want to just throw that in there as well so anyway so pretty much close this out or whatever 
Um, now everybody in my family has been blocked. Like I said, I decided to just move my own separate way. I felt like everyone was in. I felt like everybody was against me. And I really was just hurt. And I feel like for my own legal sake and for my business, my livelihood, and I want to point this out there too. I was started my business when I was 17. I didn't go to, I didn't graduate college and I also didn't even finish college, let alone I've never had a real, I never had a job outside of Moon X. So for anyone that is near me that could jeopardize how I make my money, make my living or, or supply my business to others or even pay like, you know, pay people, I can never respect that. And I remove myself immediately. <laughs> that I remove myself from the situation so quickly because this is my livelihood. You know what I'm saying? So when my mom pulled that stud and I felt like my entire family knew, I just removed myself. Like I removed myself from it. And my stepmom got cut because you land with the enemy. My stepsister got cut because I feel like you over there with them, y'all conversating, y'all plotting against me. She may not have had nothing to do with it, but either way, go, you gotta go too. Your boyfriend, he a liability, he gotta go. So it's like, that's just what it is. My grandma, you wrote the letter, you lied and act like you didn't know that I knew you wrote the letter. You really act like that and I stopped talking to you. So that's pretty much like the gist of it. My uncle ended up coming into work. Like, you know, once he found out about the whole situation, he flew down from LA and he walked in and he was like, why don't you just pay your mom the money and we could just move on from this? And ever since that day, I blocked him as soon as she left outside that door. And I never spoke to him ever again because for you to even want to pick sides on something like that or not even let your own niece know, you dead ass wrong. I could never respect as a man and let alone as my uncle. So you got cut too. It's just what it is. Like yeah. nothing more, nothing less on that. Well, I also want to point out too, uh, I want to say maybe a year and a half has now passed. A year or a year and a half now has passed and i also moved out of my apartment i brought my first home i couldn't share that with my family i couldn't invite my family over for barbecues dinners nothing like that because you know we're no contact holidays go by i spend majority of them alone unless i'm with any of my friends but well, majority of my friends are booed up so they be with their significant other which is perfectly fine and perfectly healthy for them so usually i spend a lot of my holidays my birthdays and stuff like that by myself but i don't celebrate my birthday no matter what year i try after 2020 my birthday just has been kind of ruined because every year my birthday reminds me of that letter i got and that letter literally turned my world like upside down for real so yeah i just really don't really celebrate my birthdays like no matter how hard i try to it just never works out so august 30th is a day for me but i do want to say when i finally decided to come out about my story because a lot of my customers really would ask me especially when i did my first pop-up that same year back in 2020 which was in november of black friday everybody would come up to me where's your mom where's your grandma where's your aunt? i want to meet them they so funny i want to see them and i'm like shit face trying to explain to them on damn my mom tried to sue me just a few months ago so i can't even tell y'all about that i don't talk to my grandma like, i just had so many like ways on how embarrassed and just sad i felt and people asking me not knowing i literally went to the bathroom and i cried my eyes out at my pop-up shop and it really altered my mood when it came down to me doing my work but i pushed through we had an amazing pop-up and thank you to everybody who came out to that as well like i really did appreciate it but years passed when i was decided to move out of atlanta and i was in dallas i was in dallas in my hotel room alone and i made a video on my youtube channel called 23 and that's when i had just turned no 22 i had just turned 22 at the time and i had made a video doing my makeup get ready with me and i broke down my whole entire like life story that i'm telling on here i broke it down in my video and my that video grossed so many views in the first 12 hours and i don't i'm not sure i'm quoting it on how my mom found out about it but she left the meanest nastiest comment on my video to where i had to even take the video down and i feel like i've been having i've been have i've been forced to keep silent on how i felt and the things i really went through since 2020 a secret and i hate that and i feel like me going through that really has altered my business has altered how i view my business has altered how i view myself relationships friendships anything like that and i could say that situation has made me so bitter what would have made me so bitter not has had made me so bitter back in that time frame to where i was so mean to my customers 
I hated interactions. I didn't want to come to work. I was messing, like I was just so depressed and I would just be so mean to my boyfriend, be mean to my friends. Like I just didn't know how to literally deal with the fact of people, the closest to me really played and hurt my feelings. So it really turned me into like this animal and I hated it. And I hate how I treated my consumers, my friends, like my boyfriend at the time. And I'm so thankful that my friends and my boyfriend was able to really understand you're hurting right now. This is not true. This is not the moon and really we know. This is not the caring, loving girl that will give the shirt off her back, the jacket off her back to make sure we good. This is not this person. You're hurting. So my bet, like Sasha, like my friend ended up telling me to go to therapy. And I ended up going to therapy and therapy has helped my life tremendously. Like, and even when I'm not in therapy because it's an on and off process with me, I still pray. I still write down my emotions. I still learn now everything that's need a reaction. I know then when to walk away. I know who to have my business, who not to have my business. I know not to never hire family. I know not to never let family ever play with me like that. I know to tell anybody around me that's struggling with this to cut them off and put you first. Like, I had to learn all of this at the age of 20. Literally the age of 20 and 21 and ongoing now. I'm now 25 since last month and every day that doesn't cross my this doesn't cross my mind but I have grown tremendously from this and I can really say for me to get on a platform as big as TikTok and really get through this without time like my eyes watering up I'm pausing and all that I really have grown and I'm so happy I'm able to share my story and I took two years off of working because I just could not focus on my business. I almost lost my entire business over my family bullshit. And my business ultimately ultimately destroyed my family, but my business is my baby. And I don't regret anything I went through with my business and I don't regret having my business. I'm blessed beyond measures. I feel like I'm 25, I'm still here, I'm still kicking. We are eight years in. Moon X is still starting strong. This went from me making this in my kitchen to now being in a lab with dermatologists, chemists, and I just am blessed and I'm thankful. And I just wanted to come on here and share my story. And I wanna say anybody who's battling or dealing with anything like this, to wrap this on up, because I understand the video is long, but seriously, and I wanna speak more on the black community, our African-American community, please speak to somebody. Please stop allowing people to brush how you feel underneath the rug. That shit is not okay. That shit is not cool. That shit is never cute and it's never going to talk about it later. No, I want to talk about it now. This is bothering me. And please do not let anyone, anyone that hurts you alter you as a person. This has altered me as a person tremendously to where I didn't even recognize myself. And like I said, I was so mean and just so evil and i hate that that's a lot of first impressions that people got on me but i hope now and just in general as time passes and people really meet me and know me they're like oh you're not saying i thought you was and i'm like i have to just take that as like damn that's not what i want people to think about me but that's what i've shown them what it do everyday people man it's your boy pj today we back with another lit video we back in the confessional and yes we stay in lit big dog Shout out to my everyday people who rock with me every day. Shout out to my homeboy, Lucky Wheels and Deals. He keeps it lit. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section, man. Make sure you hit up uh, custom underscore freaks on Instagram, okay? Where you can get your custom tumbler. Okay, don't get this one. Apparently, this mug is bad luck. Because, Lord, have mercy. The Cowboys can't win for losing, okay? Um, I don't know what teams like to play in the fourth quarter, but mine. But anyway, hit the custom underscore freaks for you a uh, tumbler. Now your boy's still under the weather, so if I sound terrible, I look terrible, all that just be like, just tell me I look good just on GP. Anyway, let's get to it. Uh, man, this is sad. Family can be terrible. Family can really be terrible, you know what I'm saying? It really, it's not even like, a lot of it's not their fault. I mean, it's their fault, but it's not their fault. Because as a society and as a culture of black people, uh, we're not taught to run businesses. You know, not a lot of us. Uh, you have to have a business, family-orientated family to 
really have a successful business and that starts from when you little so when you the youngest person in your family you trying to bring in people that's an older generation especially an older generation of greedy people who are greedy from generations ahead of them then that becomes a problem when you become a successful person and you're young because then you got the conniving people and the scam scandalous people always trying to get over on you some way and that be family and then family be the first people to talk bad about you to others. They can't wait to tell your business to somebody else. Oh, I remember when she was this and this and she peed in the bed. I remember her boyfriend cheated on her while she pregnant. Like, why you, you my family? Why you telling all my business like that? Like, because I didn't give you what you wanted and now you mad at me and you want to use what you know about me against me? That's crazy, right? See, there's a person in my family that I'm related to, and um, that person cho chose to do some wild stuff and go online and talk to talk to the people who don't like me, talk to them about me. Ain't that crazy? And you you're supposed to be in my family? It's, it's weird. And not only that, just like rambling on at the mouth. And then not only that, it's another person related to that person that I always help out and motherfucker wanna blame me for them having a falling out. They ain't got nothing to do with me. And then that same person goes online and trash talks my kids. Like who does that? That's family, that's family for you. So I ain't saying I'm just like the millionaire like she is and they gonna our family and my business and I pay them and all this stuff. No, what I'm saying is Family, the closest people to you will do you and try to screw you, backstab you in the back and act like they never knew you. Okay, word to Goldie Low. But, yeah, you can't, sometimes you got to leave family where they lay. I'd rather pay a stranger than to pay my family. Look, it's crazy how we'll treat strangers better than when we'll treat our own family. But then, when our family wants our help and we don't want to help them, they'll turn on us. It's not that we don't want to help them. It's like, if I give you my money, I need something in return. I don't want to just hand you money and never see you again. I, would, I wouldn't do that to anybody. Like, even if I'm donating to a cause, I'm donating for a reason. If I'm donating to you, what's your cause? Is it helping you? What are you going to get out of it? And can I use it as a tax write-off? If I can't use you as a tax right off the property, not I'm not gonna donate to whatever it is. But there are some family members that you feel obligated to help. Like she said, she would help her uncle just because he's family. You know, I have aunts and uncles that I would love to help, and cousins that I love to help. They have something going on, I love to help. But you have to have a fine line where it says, I can't help that much, I can only help this much. And uh, they might like it. They might not like it. They might not agree with it. They might be okay with it because it's something. But, I mean, if you had nothing before and somebody gave you something, it's a little more than what you had. But they don't see it like that because you, it's, and they like mine. They raised you. They think you owe them. Your mind, your mama's mind, her mama ra birthed her. She didn't raise her. She birthed her. So her mama thinks she owe her. She don't owe you nothing. Y'all don't owe each other nothing. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Everyday people, man, let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section, man. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll let you later. Peace.